Hello everybody, welcome to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and this is Lecture 4, Normal Costing and Allocation of Overhead Variance. We are still at Cost Accounting and Control. At the end of the video, you should be able to define and explain normal costing and define and explain predetermined overhead rates. Also, you are expected to allocate immaterial overhead application variance to cost of goods sold. Before anything else, please like, share, and subscribe to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and hit the notification bell button to alert you of the latest video lessons. For all of your questions, comments, and suggestions, please put them down in the comment section below. And for webinar and speakership invites, please send me a message at kevintroy.chua1994 at gmail.com. Thank you for your utmost support for Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. Thank you for your utmost support for Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. And may these videos continue to help students in their online learning and academic development. And may these videos continue to help teachers in enhancing their lesson plans and teaching methodologies. Again, thank you for trusting Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH as your online learning partner. Maraming salamat. Okay, let's start our lesson. So actually, nasabi ko po sa last lesson na accounting for materials na po yung ibibigay kong lecture four. But I I think mas okay po siguro na ituro ko mo na ng mas extensive sa inyo yung normal costing bago po tayo magdig deeper into materials, labor, and overhead. Okay, so we proceed now for the meantime to normal costing. Okay, so normal costing system is a costing system that assigns actual direct materials and direct labor to production but is using a predetermined rate to assign overhead cost. Okay? Tandaan po natin lagi, pag normal costing, yung direct materials natin, actual. Yung direct labor natin, actual din. Pero pagdating ng overhead, meron lang tayong ina-apply na amount galing sa ating predetermined rates. So if we will be... Um, Comparing actual costing and normal costing, ang tanging pinagkaiba lang nila is on the side of overhead. Because our factory overhead in normal costing is applied. Ngayon, baka tanongin nyo ako, di ba? Why use normal costing if we can just accumulate the total actual cost for a manufacturing company, di ba? Okay, so number one, it allows an entity to get immediate cost information for decision making and pricing decisions without the need to wait for the actual overhead cost with which takes time to accumulate. So, lalo na when your reporting period is one whole year, syempre hindi mo naman hihintayin yung isang buong taon para mag-accumulate ng actual overhead cost para lang ikaw ay magkaroon ng cost information na magagamit mo sa decision making and pricing decisions. Remember, pag manufacturing company, we need cost information in order for us to decide what, uh, what can happen and also to decide sa ating prices, de ba? So kailangan talaga natin agad ng cost information na hindi na natin mahihintay yung actual na overhead na mai incur natin. Lalo na nga kung ma kung mahaba yung accounting period mo, which is one year. Kahit nga one month, eh, hindi mo na mahihintay lahat talaga na maaccumulate mo yung uh, actual na amount ng overhead mo. Lalo na if you really need an immediate cost information that you will use for pricing decisions. Okay? Number two, when overhead rates are predetermined, it allows uniform costing whatever season or circumstance the company is into. Okay? Let's say for example, yung operations mo ay whole year. And then here in the Philippines, we have summer and we have the wet season or yung ating pong tag-ulan. So basically, pag summer, mas mataas ang ating utility cost dahil, syempre, mas gumagamit ng aircon, di ba, yung factory. So you can expect that during summertime, utility costs in the factory, which is part of your overhead, is mas mataas, di ba? Ngayon, hindi naman pwede na mas maniningil ka ng mas mataas na presyo for your products pag summer dahil lamang ang iyo pong uh, utility cost ay mas mataas kapag ka summer at kapag ka naman po tag-ulan eh, pwede ka magbaba ng presyo dahil mababa ang utility cost mo. So, hindi naman po pwede ganun, di ba? Um, normal costing allows us uniform costing because meron lang tayong amount na ina-apply sa overhead. Whatever circumstance the company is into in the whole year. 
ba? Or in the whole accounting period, okay? So, yung prices natin magiging uniform and yung costing natin magiging uniform then and then number three within the relevant range there will be no problems on fluctuations of activity levels and the costs related thereunto let's say for example meron kang fixed cost na 50,000 anong sabi natin dati sa fixed cost dun, at, dun sa ating lesson ng cost behavior pag mas konti lamang po yung na-produce mo konti lang yung kakain ng total fixed cost. So, mas mataas ang total fixed cost mo. Pero pag marami kang pin-reduce, pin mas marami yung kakain ng total fixed cost mo. So, yung, total, yung fixed cost per unit mo, bababa. Ba. So, hindi ka rin pwedeng maningil ng mas mababang preso pag marami kang na-produce. Tapos, pag konti lang yung na-produce mo, mas tataasan mo yung presyo dahil mataas ang fixed cost mo per unit. Hindi naman din pwedeng ganon. Okay? So, it's actually related to uniform costing as well. Whatever fluctuations of activity levels, it will just still be the same because you are always using the same predetermined overhead rate at whatever level of production within the relevant range. So, it's actually all about uniformity and getting immediate cost information. That's why we're using normal costing, okay? But remember, what we report in the financial statements under generally accepted accounting principles is the actual cost of product. So, mamaya, ma matututunan nyo na from normal costing, paano pa rin tayo makakarating sa actual cost of products. Okay, so a company uses a predetermined overhead rate in order for them to apply overhead to production. The predetermined overhead rate comes from the budgeted overhead cost of the company for the period divided by the specified volume of activity that they expect for the period. Remember that overhead and activity levels are budgeted by an entity for the whole accounting period. Siyempre kasi nagpaplano tayo, di ba? The company plans their level of production and the overhead that they will incur for that specific period. Okay? And then the numerator and the denominator in, the, in determining the uh, predetermined overhead rate is being studied well based on management estimates, past actual production, or other bases and targets. Okay? So, hindi lang naman po basta-basta naglalagay yung company ng amount na, ah, ito ang ating uh, overhead cost this month. We divide it to the number of units that we will produce this month. Pinag-aaralan din po yan ng company. And it's, it, uh, it, it really needs planning. Okay? Because dire diretso kasi yan eh. Actually, it's a domino effect. Pag mali ang planning mo, mali ang costing mo. And mali ang prices mo. Okay? So, it's a domino effect. Garbage in, garbage out. That's, that's what will happen. Okay? So, remember that the T-account for overhead sa debit side po is nandun po lahat ng ating actual overhead. And uh, right side po ay depende. Pag actual costing, kung ano yung actual overhead, yun yung i-apply natin sa production. And then, yung pinag-uusapan natin today, which is your normal costing. So, normal costing, we use predetermined rates. Okay? Now, with the use of actual costing, what happens is actual overhead is equals to applied overhead since actual amount of overhead yung ina-apply natin sa production. Wala tayong problema pag actual costing. Wala tayong variances. Because actual overhead is equal to applied overhead in actual costing. But, with the use of normal costing, actual overhead differs from applied overhead. Magkaiba. Bakit? The manufacturing overhead account is debited sa lahat po ng ating actual overhead, but it is credited for the amount applied to production. Kaya po tayo nagkakaroon ng variance. Okay, and uh, since we're talking about variance, ganito po ang ating uh, gagawin, no? When actual overhead is greater, than the applied overhead, manufacturing overhead T account debit is greater than the manufacturing overhead T account credit. Overhead at the end of the period is under applied. Tatawagin po nating under applied overhead variance pag mas maliit yung applied overhead kesa sa actual overhead or stating it differently, actual overhead is greater than applied overhead. But 
if actual overhead is less than applied overhead, what happens is that the manufacturing overhead T account debit is lesser than the manufacturing overhead T account credit. And overhead at the end of the period is over applied. Kaya natin siya tinawag na over applied kasi mas malaki si applied overhead kesa po kay actual overhead. Okay, so that's our theory discussion and let's proceed to your problems para mas maintindihan po natin yung tinatakel natin na concepts kanina. Okay, problem number one. Jenny Manufacturing incurred the following cost of production during the period. Meron po tayong direct materials, indirect materials, direct labor with the, uh, the number of labor hours during the period and then actual amounts of overhead like indirect labor, rent, depreciation, and utilities. Jenny applies manufacturing overhead at 50% of direct labor cost. How much are the following? We are to compute for the total manufacturing cost and the overhead variance under or over applied. Okay, let's answer question number one. So we start with your direct materials. You simply multiply 4,000 units by 56 pesos per unit. The direct materials that were used in production is 224,000. Susundan natin siya ng isa niyang kapatid, which is your direct labor. Ang nagamit daw pong direct labor hours is 9,600. You simply multiply it by 70. That is 672,000. Okay, since we are in normal costing, remember that the company applies manufacturing overhead at 50% of direct labor cost. So, what will be your applied overhead? You simply get your direct labor of 672,000 and multiply it by 50%, which is your overhead application rate. Okay, so 672,000 times 50% is 336,000. Ano pong components ng total manufacturing cost? Yung tatlo lang pong magkakapatid, materials, labor, and overhead. So, your total manufacturing cost is just the sum between the three, 1,232,000. Now, let's compute for the overhead variance under or over applied. Pagka po tayo ay nagko-compute ng overhead variance under or over applied, we simply compare yung ating pong actual versus applied overhead. Okay, so we start with your indirect materials of 1,000 units times 35, which is 35,000. And then nakalista na po yung iba. Your indirect labor of 96,400, factory rent of 120,000, factory depreciation of 42,000, and factory utilities of 22,000. Just get the total and that is your actual overhead. Now, if your actual overhead is 315,400, and your applied overhead is 336,000. You just get the difference between the two. Your overhead variance is 20,600. Now, since your applied overhead is larger than your actual overhead, mas malaki po ang applied. So, ibig sabihin, your overhead variance is over applied. Okay? So, ganun lang po ang ating uh, normal costing. Meron lang po tayong predetermined rate sa pagkocompute ng overhead na i-apply natin sa production but at the end of the period you should check the amount of overhead variance because later on in a discussion makakaapekto po siya sa ating pong cost of goods sold okay without further ado let's have problem number two at the start of the period, Maxwell Company still has inventories unfinished with a total cost of 89000 During the period, direct materials use amounted to 288000 and indirect materials is 34000 Direct labor amounted to 537 pesos per day. That is our uh, minimum wage rate in uh, NCR. Uh, for 2020, ha, if you're watching this uh, beyond 2020, baka hindi na yan, okay? So, that's for 2020, for the year 2020. Now, yung 537 per day daw po is for an 8-hour work for all 26 days of production to all 18 direct laborers. Mean uh, meanwhile, 
uh, indirect labor cost is 86,700 at the end of the period. The direct materials component of the unfinished inventories is 24,000 and the direct labor component is 18,000. Overhead is applied at 120% of direct labor cost. Compute for the following using normal costing. Questions number one, two, and three. Let's, uh, let's have question number one. The total manufacturing cost during the period. So, kung ano lang po yung inad sa production during the period, yun yung total manufacturing cost. Mamaya na po natin pag-usapan yung mga amount of unfinished inventories in the beginning and end of the period. So, sinabi naman po na during the period, the direct materials used is 288,000. So, yun na yun. Okay? And then, add natin si kapatid niyang labor. Paano po kunin yung direct labor? Kung 537 pesos per day ang bayad, i-multiply po natin ng 26 days for the whole month of production. And then, 18 laborers daw po yung nagtrabaho for that 26 days. Okay? So, you just simply multiply 537 per day times 26 days na makakuha ng lahat ng 18 laborers. That's 251,316. Now, your overhead is applied at 120% of direct labor cost. So, you multiply your direct labor of 251,316. 316 times 120%, your applied overhead is 301,579.2. You know the drill. Kapag ka po total manufacturing cost, you just add the 3. Your total manufacturing cost is 840,895.20. Okay. Your question number 2 is the ending balance of your work in process inventory. Sinabi po sa problem na... At the end of the period, the direct materials component of the unfinished inventory. So, ano po, bang, ano po ba yung work in process? In process pa kasi kailangan pa ng additional processes para matapos. So, hindi pa siya tapos. Okay. So, the direct materials component for the unfinished inventory or your work in process inventory at the end is 24,000. And then yung direct labor component naman niya daw po is 18,000. And then since nasa normal costing tayo, yung atin pong overhead ay i-apply din po natin yung, yung 120%. So you simply multiply 18,000 to 120%, that is 21,600. Add the materials labor and overhead sa ating pong work in process inventory your work in process inventory at the end of the period is 63,600 okay so for number 3 let's compute for the cost of goods manufactured under normal costing we start with your total manufacturing cost of 840,895 and then we add the beginning balance of your work in process inventory yun po yung sinabi sa pinakaunang sentence na at the start of the period the amount of of unfinished inventory has a total cost of 89,000. Yun po yun, okay? Total cost of work put in the process is 929,895.20. Deduct po natin yung na-compute natin na work in process inventory na 63,600. Your cost of goods manufactured is 866,295.20. Awesome, okay? Let's proceed with problem number three. For problem number three, ayan, the following account balances were made available by Woodley Manufacturing. So, binigyan po kayo sa problem ng raw materials inventory, work in process inventory, and finished goods inventory, beginning and ending balances. Now, during the production period, ang net purchases daw po natin ng raw materials is 386,000 and then direct labor cost incurred po natin is 420,000. Then, meron din po tayong mga actual overhead na pinasok sa production. Okay? So, ah, sorry, na nagamit during production. Uh, mali yung word. Kasi pag sinabi nga palang pinasok sa production, yun na po yung applied. Okay, sorry. And then, overhead application rate is 80% of direct labor cost. And then, cost of goods sold at normal costing before period and adjustments is 1,072,000. Okay? So, prepare the following. We have four questions and we work with questions number one to four. Okay, so for question number one, how much is the initial cost of goods sold cal uh, 
sorry, the initial cost of goods sold calculation under normal costing. Well, sinabi naman na po sa problem, 1,072,000. Let's prove it it's, if it's correct, okay? So, under normal costing, um, same naman pa rin po yung starting point. So, we have your materials portion. So, yung, uh, okay, mag-ano po tayo? Laser pointer. Okay. So, yung ating pong raw materials inventory na no, 164,000. Ito po yun. Then, add po natin yung net purchases na 386,000 for a total materials available for use during the period of 550,000. Then, i-deduct po natin si raw materials inventory ending na 147. Pero, wag nyo pong ikakalimutan na i-deduct si indirect materials para po ang lalabas natin sa difference ay purong-puro na direct materials lang po. Okay? Then, lagay na po natin si direct labor na actual 420,000. And then, since this is normal costing, gagamitin po natin yung overhead application rate na 80% ng direct labor cost. So, you apply overhead at 336,000. Okay? At the magkakapatid, your total manufacturing cost is 1,081,000. Doon na po tayo sa computation ng cost of goods manufactured using our beginning and ending balances for work in process inventory. So, add lang po natin si work in process inventory beginning na 99,000. That is your cost, total cost of work. Put into process less your 156,000 ending balance of work in process inventory which is 156,000. So, your cost of goods manufactured is 1,000,000. 24. Then, proceed na po tayo sa cost of goods sold using your finished goods inventory information. So, finished goods inventory beginning is 237,000 and that's your cost of goods available for sale less ending inventory of 189,000. Your cost of goods sold is 1,072,000. So, it corresponds with what the problem told you. Okay? That is your initial cost of goods sold calculation under normal costing. Tapos na po ba? Hindi pa kasi mag adjust pa tayo ng overhead variance. Okay? So for question number 2, let's calculate the overhead variance. Ito po, nilista naman na yung atin pong actual overhead. Utilities na 89, factory rent na 60, depreciation na 45, indirect labor na 100, and indirect materials na 78. Okay, so your actual overhead is 372,000. Ngayon, compare po natin sa applied natin kanina na 336,000, your overhead variance is 36,000. Ngayon, paano nyo i-judge kung over or under? Ang actual nyo, 372, pero i-apply nyo lang, 336. So, kulang yung na-apply nating overhead to answer the actual overhead. So, that is an under-applied variance. Okay? Ngayon, what will be the entry to close the overhead variance to cost of goods sold? Yan po kasi yung kailangan nating adjustment. Any variance po natin sa overhead When immaterial, kailangan po nating i-close sa cost of goods sold. Okay? So, ganito po mangyayari. Ang itsura po ng T-account ng manufacturing overhead, sabi nga po sa inyo, lahat ng nasa debit yung actual, nasa credit yung applied. Now, the difference is a debit balance of 36,000. That is under-applied kasi nga po, kulang po yung na-apply nyo na overhead variance. So, ano po ang magiging closing entry natin para mag-zero out na si manufacturing overhead? 36,000 yung balance natin na kailangang i-zero. So, lalagay natin siya sa credit. Okay? Para mag-zero out na si manufacturing overhead and charge it to cost of goods sold. Okay, so debit cost of goods sold of 36,000 and then credit manufacturing overhead of 36,000. Now, coming from that information, yung cost of goods sold po, in-adjust natin ng 36,000. So, at normal costing, yung cost of goods sold natin, 1,072,000, eh, in-adjust natin sa overhead variance na 36,000. Our cost of goods sold at actual costing is really 1,108,000. Ngayon, patunayan natin na talagang yung cost of goods sold natin at actual costing is 1,108,000. Gagawa tayo ng statement of cost of goods manufactured and sold na ang gamit eh as if hindi tayo nag-normal costing, actual costing tayo. Okay? So, ganito ang magiging itsura niya. 
same amounts pa rin naman po yung ginamit except for manufacturing overhead which is actual na po. Kasi remember, ang actual costing, actual din ang overhead which is 372,000. If you would go back kanina, ang actual overhead natin is 372,000. Ito po yun. So as you can see, pag pinerform nyo yung calculation, your cost of goods sold at actual costing after adjustment natin ng overhead variance ay 1,108,000. Tapos, in case na nag-actual costing talaga tayo, hindi tayo nag-normal costing, talagang in-apply nating overhead is yung actual overhead. So, yung cost of goods sold natin na lumabas is 1,108,000. So, nag-correspond nag siya with each other. Okay? So, pero remember, under GAAP, talagang ang ating pong nire-report syempre actual. Kaya nga po tayo merong step ng ina-adjust po natin si overhead variance sa cost of goods sold kasi we, we want to know the actual cost of products that were sold which is yun po yung information na kailangan natin sa financial statements under GAAP. Okay? Remember, di ba? Remember, balik kayo sa concept ng inventories nyo, di ba? Inventories are always reported at cost, de ba? And the actual cost of the product is yun talagang na incur natin na actual manufacturing overhead, okay? It's just that again, gumagamit po tayo ng normal costing para mas mapabilis po yung pag-accumulate natin ng cost information. Pero hindi po tayo mauuwi sa cost of goods sold natin na 1,072,000 kasi meron pa po tayong adjustment due to overhead variance. Bakit po sa dulo ginagawa yung overhead variance calculation tsaka po adjustment kasi sa dulo lang naman po talaga natin nalalaman yung amount po ng ating actual manufacturing overhead. Pero kung titignan nyo po yung nangyari dito, in case talaga nag-actual costing si company, ang talagang cost of goods sold niya is 1,108,000 which is nag-correspond naman po nung gumamit tayo ng normal costing and then in-adjust natin yung overhead variance. It's just the same, 1,108,000. Awesome. I hope you understand our lesson today. Promise po, ang next lesson natin, accounting for materials. So, uh, again, please like, share, and subscribe to Search US Accounting Lessons PH. Medyo may clear lesson ko, 26 minutes lang. <laughs> and then hit the notification bell button to alert you pag may bago akong upload. Okay? For all of your questions, comments, and suggestions, please put them down in the comment section below and message me at kevintroy.chua1994 at, at gmail.com. This has been Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH College Edition. This is Cost Accounting and Control. To God be all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you and have a great day. Sarangeyo!